here today with Helen Lefevre, who's going to provide us with some of the history and information of our town before we get going with our WOW raffle this weekend. Hello, Helen. How are you doing? Hi, good. I'm good to see you. Good to see you, too. Hey, Helen, I, there's a lot of people coming into town this weekend that may not know the history of Fort Recovery, may not understand what this town is about, what history lies behind it, or why the town even has its name. So could you provide them with some of that history? Sure, I can help you. Um, we are a small town, but we have a big history. So uh, the biggest part of our history are the two battles that happened here back in 1791 and 1794. And the wall behind me, the mural, depicts the uh, very first battle. It is a battle where the Indians attacked our American army under Arthur St. Clair, General, Major General Arthur St. Clair, and um, the army was soundly defeated by the Indians. Um, over 900 lost their lives. Um, American soldiers and followers of the camp lost their lives uh, in that first battle. And so we have a monument a few blocks away that uh, has the remains in there and um, a monument is 101 feet tall and it's an obelisk just like the Washington Monument but it has a frontiersman because he faces west showing that they wanted to get this land going west. So that was the first battle, a major defeat and in fact the first congressional investigation ever held in the United States was held about St. Clair and his role in the battle here. So um, he was exonerated when they found out that the quartermaster had not provided materials for him as they should and, um, and that he could not get a regular army together and had time to actually prepare them. So, uh, so he was exonerated, but still it was a major defeat and President George Washington had to suffer a defeat for his first conquest. Absolutely, that's so interesting to me. You know, I, I say there's so many people coming into town that may not know the history there's so many people that live in this town that that couldn't repeat that story right there and i may be one of them i know some of the history but it, every time i hear that story it just amazes me you know george washington had just become our president at that time and and he's you know the leader at this time and that was a lot of fire he came under i think because of that battle it sure was and and the fact that there really wasn't an army after the revolutionary war the soldiers went back to their regular jobs and so we didn't have a standing army yeah, so we had to try to get people together and who wanted to come out here and yeah. fight the Indians when they could stay in and uh, continue with their jobs yeah. or whatever. So that was the first battle and uh, General Washington, President Washington had to um, appoint someone else and he appointed Anthony Wayne, Major General Anthony Wayne. And Wayne was sometimes known as Mad Anthony Wayne not because he was out of his mind or anything, but because he was a very good disciplinarian and made sure the soldiers did what they were supposed to do. And sometimes they said, you're mad, but mad Anthony Wayne. Mm -hmm. So um, Anthony Wayne put his army together, trained them down in Fort Washington, which is Cincinnati, made his way back up. And he actually stayed at uh, Greenville, built a fort at Greenville and um, was at Fort Greenville when he sent a de detachment out to this site, the site of the first battle, and built a fort. So we have a second mural yep. that shows the battle that happened in that fort. And you see it on this wall. And this is a scene that takes place inside the blockhouse and shows even a few uh, of the Native Americans helping the soldiers at that point. Um, the second battle was a major victory for the U.S. Army. We call the first battle the Battle of the Wabash, or St. Clair's defeat, and this one is known as the Battle of Fort Recovery because it actually had the fort. So when he left Fort Greenville, uh, he went to sent that detachment out here and built the fort. And they had different names that they thought about calling this area, but uh, since the land wanted to be, they wanted to recover the land from the Indians, he called it Fort Recovery. <laughs> <laughs> and the Fort Recovery had about 200 men that stayed in the fort. And what we have today 
is a um, two block houses and stock connecting stockade, not the all four block houses as it originally was built. But uh, the block houses, the, the one is open for people to go through. And while we're going there, we're passing by this uh, two-story log house that was built originally in 1840 and was south of town on the Mercer Dark County line. And uh, we moved it here know, 30 years ago, something like that. And uh, it has a lot of items from early pioneer history. So across the street is the fort and has the two block houses and the connecting stockade. So because we had the fort, the army was successful in, um, in defeating the Indians. And that led to Little Turtle, who was the chief of the, Indi of the Miami Indians and the head of the Confederation that fought here, um, he no longer would be in battle after that battle of Fort Recovery. So the battle at Fallen Timbers, which followed, um, Chief Little Turtle did not take part. So that ended the Indian Wars, and they had the Treaty of Greenville at um, Greenville, obviously, mm -hmm. with Anthony Wayne and Chief Little Turtle, and the also Chief um, Blue Jacket. So now we're going by the museum, and the museum used to be a library years ago, but was turned into a museum, and it's amazing. It has how many artifacts actually from the battles Absolutely. and from when the soldiers were camped here. Mm -hmm. And what are some of those artifacts in there? It's been many years since I've even been in there. Yeah, so what well, can you find in there? Um, anything that the soldiers might have had. Mm -hmm. And a few of the guns. There is a, um, a cannon and it has three soldiers, three mannequins that show how the, it was uh, needed, how three soldiers were needed to, in order to operate the cannon and uh, gives the story about them. And it also shows the uniforms of the soldiers. And um, uh, there's a lot of cannonballs and bullets and parts of guns and um, parts of the uniforms, buttons from the uniforms, um, anything of that sort. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And all of that's been, you know, dug up here, or found here, you know, in this area. I know Ball State's been in in recent years doing a lot of digs and, and finding where the original fort was and a lot of the ar artifacts. And I gotta say, I had one of my, neatest experiences. I used to own a, a house just down a block and we were digging up a new driveway and we dug up an old, old horseshoe and I brought it up here and it was verified from being back from the late 1700s. And so just, you know, that you know, finding an artifact like that really makes it hit home for me that, you know, that this happened here. It's many years ago, but this happened here. Yes. And like we took a tree down across the street some years ago. And when they took it down, they could find lots of bullets in that tree. I mean, it's just evidence that what a major battle went on here. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. So, yeah. if we, we're going to continue walking down the path here, Helen, I want to you know point out some of the things down this path because if you're not from town, you, we're really close to Ambassador Park where our Wow Raffle is going on. We take this path right down here, and it's going to bring us right to where we need to be. And this is an absolutely amazing path to walk. It's shaded, it's got seats, and it has signs all the way up and down that explain a lot of this history that Helen's telling us about. We're going to swing around to this sign right here, Helen. And can you kind of just talk about these placards that sit around town, when they were put up, and what they uh, describe to everyone? Okay, this, these are wayside exhibits, like you will see in a lot of major tourist attractions. And um, it explains the whole history uh, from the first settling of, of uh, people coming here to um, the two battles mm -hmm. and um, to the present time. So it has a timeline across the top and it tells you which um, exhibit is the first, second. We happen to be at number two right now. The first one is by the museum. And you can read those at any time. And along there is a box that contains the maps and we'll tell you um, where to walk. And um, it's just a very easy walk down there and back. Um, and so this particular one just talks about before 1791, but it will go on. And when you get by the Wabash River, that's where it tells you, mm -hmm. you know, this is where a certain group of uh, soldiers were, were uh, stationed and where the Indians attacked from. So it gives you a little map and 
Mm -hmm. Tells a lot of information about that. Absolutely. And as we walk down here through the park, um, the Wabash River isn't today where it used to be. Is it? Have they moved it yes. since the battles? Yes, they have uh, in this area just uh, south of town. Um, they, I, I, from what I understand, it was kept flooding the town. Mm -hmm. So they re routed it so that, uh, yes, it was moved a little bit. Absolutely. And we'll walk by here. Uh, Helen, tell us about this uh, uh, other building we have. Okay. It's another part of our historical society, Fort Recovery Historical Society's uh, properties. And it is a one-story log house that was uh, two log houses that were donated to us. And to get enough good uh, logs, it took two of them to put together to put into this particular one. So we house agricultural tools and uh, blacksmith tools in there all things that were needed mm -hmm. um the blacksmith you know even the army had brought a blacksmith along with them because so often they had to yeah make their own uh, fix their own things or make some other things so uh for the people attending the wild raffle if they want to take this walk up the path uh this evening or saturday during will these buildings be open for them that they can enter yeah. um, I'm not sure of the time of the buildings. I will mm -hmm. def definitely open from 12 to 5. Definitely open um, 12 to 5. Yeah. And if there's interest, you know, it could be open all day. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but the um, you can always walk by the fort, walk by the um, log houses, see the murals, and read all these signs that give the history. There's lots of signage everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, so the mu is the museum also open 12 to 5 12 tomorrow to 5 then? Or the normal. 12 to 5 hours. normal hours. Right. Well, that's absolutely amazing, Helen. We, you know, appreciate you spending some of your time with us and, and sharing the history of Fort Recovery. I hope those of you out there have learned a little something. I know I have from this. If you're in town this weekend for the WOW raffle and you have some extra time, take this walk. Hey, we are just across the river right now from the grounds of the WOW raffle. You follow this path up. If you come up to the museum, placard number one's up there. How many of those plaques did you say there were around? 15. 15 of them. Take the walk around town, ladies and gentlemen. You'll learn a lot about the history of this town. We are very proud of this town. So, Helen, thank you very much. Is there anything else you want to share with everyone? Well, we hope everybody comes and, and reads about our history. It is a very important one, and we're happy to have you in town. Yeah, thank you very much, Helen.